Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, I showed you how to convert this Figma design into a real website using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And we have already completed writing all the code. So if you go to our Chrome browser, this is how the design looks. So if you scroll down, we can see that all the sections are displayed correctly. And we have also designed the responsive versions. So if I right click over here and click on inspect, and here we can click on this button called toggle device toolbar. And this is how it will look on a mobile device. So here we can see we have all the sections displayed just like we have in the Figma design. And we also have this button over here for the navigation menus and we can see that the menus are displayed over here. And if I go ahead and select another device from here, let's select iPad. And this is how it will look on an iPad. So we have a different layout. We have two columns for the footer. And uh, let's select a larger device. So if I select iPad Pro, we have a different design. So we have completed writing all the code for this design. Now in this video, we will just clean up some of the code and then we will deploy this website online. Now I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and check that out. But I recommend you to watch all the videos in the playlist and write the code along with me so that you will understand how everything is designed. All right, so let's get started. Right here, I'm in the source code of our website and this is the CSS file. So let's take a look at this CSS and let's see what we can improve. So here you can see in the body, we have set a font family of Poppins and Sans Serif. So whenever we have this font family set to Poppins in any of the elements, we can just delete that. So let's scroll down and uh, here you can see in the nav element inside the anchor tag, we have the font family set to Poppins. But we have already set the font family to Poppins in the body. So we can just delete this line of code. And if you go back to our design, we can see that we don't have any problems. All right, let's scroll down. And now here you can see in the hero section, we have these elements over here. And uh, for the H1 and for the paragraph, we have set a color of white. So we can just cut this line of code from here and add it to the parent division, which is the hero section. So I just add it over here. And we can just delete this line of code, color of white from the H1. And here in the paragraph, we can just delete the font family line. Let's go back to the website and we can see we don't have any problems. All right, let's scroll down and uh, here in the achievement cards, if we scroll down, we can see that we have set the color of the text to dark blue color. And even for the paragraph, we have set a color of dark blue color. So we can just cut this line of code from here. And we can just add this to the parent division, which is the achievement card division. So let's scroll up and uh, let's paste it over here. And we can also delete the color from the S3. And we'll also remove the font family poppins from here and also from the paragraph. All right, let's go back to our website and uh, we don't have any problems. Now, the next thing we will do is we will decrease the space between this number and this star image. So let's go back to our code. Here we can see we have this content division and in that we have this div and in that we have the S3 and the image. So if we go back to the HTML file and uh, let's scroll up and here we can see we have the achievement cards and uh, here inside the content division we have a div and in that we have the S3 and the image. So first of all, let's add a background color to this div and uh, let's see the space that it takes. So I just add a background color over here and I'll just set it to red. And this is the space that it takes. And one more thing that I noticed over here is that this paragraph is not center aligned. So let's go back and uh, let's go over here to the paragraph. And here I'll just tap text align center. Or right, now let's go back to our CSS. And what I will do is I will set the flex to one for the S3 and the image so that both of them will have the same width. So here I'll just tap achievement card IMG. And let's set the flex to one. And here also I'll just set the flex to one. And now we can see both of them have the same width. And now I'll just reduce the height of this image. So here I'll just tap height and I'll just set the height to 42 pixels. And now I'll just add some negative margin left to this image. So let's type margin left and I'll just type negative 24 pixels. And now we can see it looks all right. So I'll just remove this background color. 
All right, now let's go back to our CSS and uh, let's scroll down. And here in the section paragraph, we have set a font family of pop-ins. So we can just remove this. And if we scroll down, we don't have any problems. And here inside the app section, we have this font family set to pop-ins. So I'll just delete this line of code. And here for the input field, we have set a font family of pop-ins. But we have to specify the font family in input fields. So if I remove this font family line from here, and if I go back to our website, we can see it doesn't have the correct font. So we have to specify the font family in the input fields. Now one issue that we have with the input field is that we don't have the correct padding. So if I just type something over here, we can see that the text goes under the button. So we have to add some more padding over here on the right. So here I'll just type padding and set the padding to 8 pixels top and for the left I'll just set a padding of 160 pixels and uh, for the bottom I'll just have a padding of 8 pixels and for the left we will have a padding of 32 pixels or right, now let's go back and uh, now we can see we have the correct padding so we can see that it doesn't go under the button or right, now that we have added this padding of right for this input field we have to check whether we have the correct padding for the mobile version so let's open the mobile version and let's type something over here and here also we have a padding of 160 for the right so we have to reset the padding over here in the mobile device so let's go back to our CSS and let's scroll down and here in the media query for 700 pixels I'll just scroll down and I'll just add the selector of the input field over here so I'll just have footer form input and I'll just add a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right. Let's go back and uh, let's see whether we have the correct padding. And now we can see we have the correct padding. All right, that's pretty much it with the code of our website. So everything looks all right. Now you can go ahead and customize this code to your needs. All right, now the final thing we need to do is deploy this website online. So let's go back to our browser. Now for deploying our website, we're going to use this service called Netlify. So you can just sign up for free or you can just log in using your GitHub account. So I'll just log in. And then you have to go to sites and you can just drag and drop your site folder over here. So here's my folder which has all the files. So here you can see we have the images and the HTML, JavaScript and the CSS files. So I'll just drag and drop this over here. And here we can see that the site has already been deployed. Now you can just go over here to domain settings and you can just add a custom domain if you want or you can just change this name. So just go over here to edit site name and I'll just type my new website. Let's see whether we have the name available. Let's add some number over here. All right now we can see we have this uh, URL my new website 123.netlify.app so let's open this and this is how it looks we can see that everything looks all right now for this subscription box you can go ahead and sign up for an email subscription service or an email newsletter service so you can go ahead and get the code and paste it over here in place of this input box and then the input field will be functional all right now let's check out the mobile version and uh, we can see it looks all right Let's check out the iPad Pro version and everything looks all right. Now if you want to update this website, you can go ahead and do that pretty easily. So here we can see in the title we have document. So I'll just change this to welcome and let's update our website. Let's go back to our source code and let's go to our index.html file and uh, let's scroll up. And here in the title, I'll just type welcome and let's save it. And now let's drag and drop this updated folder into our Netlify account. So I'll just go back to deploys. And now if we scroll down, we can see that we can just drag and drop the updated site folder over here. This is my updated folder. So I'll just drag and drop this over here. And we can see it is being uploaded. And here we can see it has been published. So let's open this website. 
and let's see whether the title is displayed and now we can see that welcome is displayed over here so everything is working all right all right so that's it for this video so this was the final video in this playlist so if you enjoyed this series please click on the like button and if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and i will also leave the link of the source code in the description of this video all right so that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching have a nice day